Hey guys, it's Neongo Johnny. Welcome to my channel. If you are new, my name is Johnny and I talk about all things paranormal in Japan. So if you are into that sort of stuff, definitely click subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and hit the bell for more notifications. I put out spooky videos every Friday. Because you guys liked this so much last time, I decided to make another unsolved true crime video. And as always, I just wanted to warn you guys that this does cover some sensitive topics such as murder and violence, so if you're triggered by those sorts of things, please feel free to click away now. If you guys know anything about Japan, you probably already know about their vending machines. There's so many vending machines everywhere, and I mean literally everywhere. Every alley you go to and every street you're on, you'll probably notice a vending machine there. There's always one within walking distance. It's pretty much an integrated part of modern day Japanese society. They sell things like normal sodas, cold teas, hot soups, and everything all the way to fast food and magic charms and umbrellas. So there's so many types of vending machines. I'm also sure that if you have heard about the vending machines in Japan, you have probably already heard about the used underwear machine. This I just want to dispel now, it's not actually true. There may be one in some adult shops somewhere in the country, but it's not an everyday occurrence. And they're definitely not on the streets. So I just wanted to get rid of that rumor now because I knew the whole comment section would be full of that if I didn't. But anyways, on to a more serious topic. In 1965, a pharmaceutical company in Japan made this drink called Oronamin Shi. And Oronamin Shi is like a healthy vitamin drink. It's still pretty sweet, it has a lot of sugar, but it does contain the vitamins B6, B2, and vitamin C. So it was marketed as a health drink. It's a fairly small glass bottle with a pull tab on the top that opens this cap up for you. We'll kind of get into why that is later in the video, but this is mostly what we will be talking about. When it was first created, it was a very popular drink, and many people bought it. However, over the following 20 years, the sales began to decline. And this was probably because the newer generation did not want to reach for a health drink when they had so many sugary options. So in 1985, the pharmaceutical company tried to do a new campaign. Every time somebody bought a drink from a vending machine, an Oronamin Shi would drop out as well. And not everybody wanted it, so if they didn't want it, they'd either leave it on or in the vending machine. So it wasn't anything surprising to find these drinks just lying around. On April 30th of 1985, a man from Hiroshima came to a vending machine. When he bought his drink, he noticed an Oronamin Shi sitting right there next to it. So thinking he got a free prize, he took both of the drinks and drank them. Almost immediately, he got really sick and was rushed to the hospital. He had severe stomach pains, vomiting, and he was just in really bad condition. After examination, he showed signs of severe poisoning and chemical burns on the inside. When they tested his vomit, they found trace amounts of the chemical paraquat. And if you guys don't know what paraquat is, it is a weed killer. It's extremely poisonous. It's so poisonous, in fact, that they banned it in over 30 countries all over the world. Just under two teaspoons of this chemical could actually kill you instantly. Even skin contact with this chemical could cause severe burns and hemorrhaging. So it's extremely toxic. During this investigation, they tried to figure out just where this chemical came from. And obviously they found it in his soda can, but they tested the entire vending machine as well. And they did not find any chemicals in any other soda in that vending machine. So it was clearly placed in his soda specifically. With barely any evidence, they closed this case very quickly. However, little did they know, this would just be the beginning of 11 murders across 8 prefectures in Japan. And possibly even more. This is honestly one of my biggest fears. Whenever I get a drink of soda or any kind of candy, I always make sure it's completely sealed before I consume it. Ever since I was little, I was just super careful about that. I don't know about you guys. With these next 11 cases, I do want to go into a little bit of detail with them, but many of them are similar, so I don't want to be repeating the same stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read them, but I'm going to summarize a few of them just so it's not redundant. On September 11th in Osaka, a 52-year-old man purchased a bottle of Oronamin Shi and found another one inside the machine. He consumed both and passed away on September 14th. Traces of paraquat were found in the beverage remnants. On September 12th in Mie, a 22-year-old college student purchased a bottle of red gold, which is an energy drink, and a bottle of the same drink was already found in the slot. He also passed away on September the 14th, and one notable thing is the poison here was not paraquat, but dequat. On September 19th in Fukui, 
A 30-year-old man consumed a can of cola that he found underneath a vending machine. Eventually, he passed away on the 22nd of September. On September 20th in Miyazaki, which is actually where I used to live when I lived in Japan, a 45-year-old man intends to purchase a drink but finds two bottles of real gold in the dispensing slot instead. He drinks both and passes away on September 22nd. They also found Paraquat in this beverage. On September 23rd in Osaka, a 50-year-old man finds two bottles of Oronaminshi in the vending machine. He consumes both two days later and dies on the 7th of October. There were also traces of this paraquat found in this beverage. On October 5th in Saitama, the death of a 44-year-old is pretty much identical to the previous one. The victim dies on the 21st of October and traces of paraquat were found in the beverage. On October 15th in Nara, a 69-year-old man finds two unnamed drinks in the dispensing slot. He consumed both right away when he went home, and he passed away on November 13th. On October 21st in Miyagi Prefecture, a 55-year-old man passes away in a similar fashion. And then on November 7th in Saitama, once again, a 42-year-old man purchases one Oronaminshi, and he took two additional bottles that he found in the dispensing slot and consumed both when he went home. He died a week later. And this brings us to our final victim. On November 17th in Saitama, a 17-year-old girl purchases an unknown drink from a vending machine, but she takes the cola she finds in the dispensing slot instead. A week later, she passes away, and traces of paraquat were found in the beverage. The unfortunate passing of this young girl actually marked the end of these murders, or at least what we think is the end. In 1985, newspapers released an article warning people to be careful of copycat crimes. People were leaving tainted cartons of milk at schools, and they had things like lime and sulfur in them in order to poison children. The Soft Drink Bottlers Association of Japan, which I didn't know was a thing, actually released an official statement saying that people should be more careful when they open their drinks, and make sure that it's actually safe. Sealed. It was then that this company made a new way of opening this drink, where now you have a pull tab that you have to peel back and it can never be resealed. So they tried to find a safer way to hand this out to consumers. I find it fascinating because I used to drink this when I lived in Japan, and I always wondered why it had this pull top cap. And now I know why it is, and that blows my mind. Due to insufficient evidence, this case was never solved. They couldn't even use DNA testing because that wasn't around until the following year. And as of now, this still remains unsolved. But they do have two guesses as to who committed this crime. Their first guess is this group called the Monster with 21 Faces. And this group does tamper with a lot of food products in Japan, and they were out there with the purpose of scaring all the people in Japan. They captured a big food company's president, and when he escaped, they threatened to release $21 million worth of tainted product all over the country. They also did similar things to multiple food companies in Japan. So the police's first assumption was that it was this group. However, when they confronted this group, they said they had better things to do. They just have fun being the bad guy. In attempts to solve this case, this was so stressful for one of the lead investigators that he actually committed suicide. Apparently, he set himself on fire because he just couldn't take the stress of this case anymore. Their second lead was this other group of thrill-seeking criminals, and apparently they got off to seeing people in pain. People thought that this would be them because this is a very painful chemical, and the murders seemed to be random, so maybe they were planting it and then watching what happened, or planting it and envisioning what happened, but they don't know for sure. This is just another assumption. As always, I'm curious to see what you guys think of this. Even though this case is very old, I'm still hoping that you guys might have some insight. Maybe you might have some thoughts or ideas that might help this out. I always look forward to your guys' comments and seeing what you have to say and chatting with you every week. It's my favorite part of doing these videos. If you guys haven't already, please remember to hit subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and hit the bell for more notifications. I put out new videos every Friday. And I will see you guys next Friday for another spooky video.